This is the Stop Time Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Hopkins, and I'm here to engage you in thought-provoking motivational conversations around practicing the art of living in the moment. I'm a certified life coach, and I'm excited to dig deep and offer insights into embracing who we are and where we are at. I cannot wait to chat with my next guests. I introduced you to Josh and Zach of the Brothers Page back in season one. Um, And if you missed that episode, I encourage you to check it out. The Brothers Page have built their multifaceted career independently by combining their unique sets of skills and honing in on the power of real connection with their fans, a connection that cannot be understated. I mean, their 1.4 million fans from across the globe have supported their weekly covers since 2011. They've received accolades from a wide range of renowned talents, such as the Jonas Brothers, the Chainsmokers, Maroon 5, One Republic, Portugal, The Man, Josh Groban, and Ellen DeGeneres, to name a few. And these brothers have begun to release their highly anticipated and much needed, might I add, original music. I cannot wait to check in with them and see what's new since we last chatted. And as if that weren't exciting enough, (laughs) Josh and Zach's sister Kylie is joining us today as well. So Kylie Leah Page is an actor, singer, dancer who was born in China and raised in New York. As a child, she appeared on Broadway in the 2006 revival of Les Mis, uh, the first national tour of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Her more recent film and TV credits include, among others, Darby and the Dead, The Girl from Plainville with Elle Fanning, The Girl in the Woods, currently on Peacock, and Kylie starred in the episode eight of The Social Distance um, program on Netflix, for which the New York Times singled her out, her episode out, saying it was one of the stronger episodes and that she gave a sweet and heart-wrenching performance. Yeah, I saw that as well, and it was really wonderful, so definitely check that out. You guys, I cannot be more excited to have you here. We have a long history. Welcome, Paige family. <laughs> thank you for having us. Yeah, nice to you. see you. <laughs> Full disclosure to my audience is I've known these guys since they were babies. Mm-hmm. Since we were <laughs> and, little chicken pot pies. Yes. And it's touring been an around honor the US. To watch. Oh my God. Such an honor to watch them them grow and flourish and um and to stay connected. Um it's really, really cool. Really means a lot. Where are you calling in from today? Where are you guys? We're calling him from the heart of New York City in Midtown. And this yeah. is your place, right? This is yours and Zach's place. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So Kylie, where are you living these days? Are you just visiting your brothers or what's going on? <laughs> Great question. Yeah. I kind of live uh nowhere right now. I'm sort of a a little nomad, as I would say, because um ever since I graduated school, I've just been traveling to different countries and different states and cities um, working. So I haven't had a chance really to settle down in a space anywhere. So I know that when I'm in New York, I'll try to sublet from friends and everything. But I think I've realized more recently that I I don't really love living in a city. Um, I need my nature, I need my quiet spaces and birds chirping. Um, I think just like from growing up in a suburban area. That's just what I'm sort of used to. That's what gives me the most comfort. Um, so I'm back and forth uh, between my parents' place and um, and here occasionally. If I have to sleep over or something, I'll crash on the couch. <laughs> but I'm trying to figure out where I, where I want to settle and put up some roots because it's just needed right now for sure. Yeah. How long has it been that you've been quote unquote on the road? Like, like two years, mm. like ever since COVID ever since 2020, that's when I graduated college. And then I've just been traveling for the past two years. Wow. Yeah. So when you travel and we all know that's part of, you know, what we do as artists, right? How does it feel the, the, the sort of going where you need to go? Like, do you think about living out of a suitcase? <laughs> well, yeah. Like it's funny because I know that feeling of when you get a gig or when you're going to do a cool project, mm-hmm. there's that like excitement, right? Oh, I'm going, yeah. I'm going. I, yeah. I'm hearing a little bit in what you're saying is like, yeah, I've been going a long time. Like there's a little perspective. Yeah. <laughs> no, totally. It's been, it's, it's really, really exciting for sure. I think like from the get go, you know, you find out you have a gig, it's amazing. You know, they, they take care of all the expenses, which is super, super nice. So it's kind of just like something I've always dreamed of doing and was a reason why I got involved with it in the first place was like, this was just the best way for me to see the world, you know, visit 
other countries and different states and stay in different places just to, you know, get a feel of what the rest of the world is like and different cultures and things. Um, but it has its challenges. You know, you live out of a suitcase, you know, you have to, it's not the most convenient, you know, you're always living out of a bag. You always have to repack and unpack. And so it, it's just a, it's just an extra hassle, but, um, but it, it comes with incredible benefits. I get to see and do things that a lot of ordinary people, I feel like, don't get to do if you work like a nine to five, you know? So there's a lot of incredible opportunity, but I think everything in the world has balance. So, you know, you have your good and bad in it all. So you just got to, you know, quit complaining. <laughs> <laughs> You're not complaining. I don't hear you complaining. Hey, you know, I, it's funny. What, what's one thing that you would not like travel without? What's one thing that you always pack? I mean, like my phone, but like, like a real travel, a real travel necessity. What do I yeah. not travel without? Oh my gosh. Okay. This one's like super personal and funny and weird. <laughs> um, my pink blanket. I've had this blanket since I was a baby. It was the first <laughs> gift that my parents ever gave me uh, when they brought me home from China. And I've had it ever since. And I sleep with it <laughs> every night. <laughs> And I bring it with me on trips and it makes me, you know, think of home. It's got very nostalgic smells. Like even when I wash it, like it just has, you know, the feel and everything is just very, you know, brings me back home. It's very grounding for me. So I travel with that with me everywhere. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, how fortunate you are to have something that means yeah. that much to you. Yeah, it's sweet. I don't think there's anything weird about it or, you know, <laughs> I think I think it's wonderful. Oh, that's pretty cool. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, Zach, how are you doing, man? <laughs> doing great. Constantly, I'm always in this creative, endless epiphany growth cycle. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of even just setting up these microphones made me really satisfied. I have a really, I through COVID, I've developed a deep connection to engineering and just setting up the parameters for this or music or anything. So even oh. that, it's almost like refuge. It's kind of a temple. And balancing that with creative and how to format that in the most right now the mission is how to socially connect that in the quickest most momentous way with the engineering and the creative like recording people is is a real passion of mine that's cool every time i record with kylie for example it's you get used to recording your own voice and then when you feel the elemental what another voice brings voices are so different more than we realize when you when you see and feel the audio and what a different word with a different singer yeah yeah i can go on now but yeah no no no. i could totally go off with you too because like i feel like asking you you know also like the the spectrum of how you're feeling right and how your body adjusts separately right so what comes out mm. of your instrument in the context of of what's going on intrinsically and extra we could really go there but that's, that's yeah <laughs> yeah no yeah for sure that's a hang we, put, the we do put it all in the music we're very <laughs> very compact with like lyrics and thoughts and like we really just want to like say what's actually going on with us um so we really we're trying to like get in time with releasing what we're feeling in the moment instead of feeling something working on it for two years releasing it and then going oh i already feel all these other things mm. so we're trying to lock our our reality with our releases a little bit more and and to add to that the engineering if it's optimized you, what you make can be heard within an hour and it can be really high quality that's what makes me obsessed with it is <laughs> that if you optimize a template of this is how this voice sounds with this microphone technically you could have that ready to share within an hour or a day so that whenever I'm troubleshooting engineering things, it's always in pursuit of the dream of immediately sharing in high quality in real time, whatever song or moment is happening right now. And that's yeah. kind of an endless pursuit, but getting closer. If that's super cool because really you're talking about, and it's a great segue too, you're really talking about capturing the moment. You mm -hmm. know how I talk about being in the moment. Well, you're like sort of, it sounds like you're super cognizant that you know, if you ha hang on too long, you're going to lose the moment, right? Mm, yeah. And, and it's like this, this idea of maybe, maybe capturing the flow, capturing the moment, right? And the universe loves making magic when things aren't recording. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have, like literally <laughs> loves doing that, if you, if you actually do something, don't record it and record it, the magic will be when you didn't record. Yeah. I was working with a band out West and last time we had these magic takes that weren't recorded and it really, it haunts me. Yeah. 
So, so that's what it inspires me to. Yeah, yeah it's being funny. haunted yeah. by the unrecorded perfect moment, and then the universe is just winking at you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you do it again? You know, this this crazy question comes up for me. Did you guys growing up believe in Santa Claus? Um. Yeah. I mean, to the degree where like there will always be a part of myself that I won't allow to not believe me too just because that yeah. to me is the nature of belief is that if you do believe in yeah. something it presents itself and, and then if you don't then that's the reality that you're going to be I, you know I living could go deep into this but obviously our the human mind and heart has the potential to believe something that isn't real is and I think it's people focus on so much what actually is real or isn't but what really is happening is when you believe a certain thing is real it feels a certain way believing Santa Claus is real has a, an emotional feeling. Your heart and your mind and your circulatory system shifts dramatically if you have something to believe. believe. Think about what acting is. Like, yeah. when, like, like the emotion is actually real and it's changing how reality feels to believe something. So, so it's more about what does reality feel like if I believe this is real, then is this real? And, and acting is such proof of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, the reason I asked too was yeah. what what made me think of it just then. It wasn't one of the question I was going to ask you. <laughs> um, <laughs> is because when you're talking about capturing the moment, it, it, my mind went to you know when you put cookies out and you try to catch Santa, but you never do because mm. Santa's an essence. Santa is whatever you want to believe it, and then if he took mm. a bite or he didn't take a bite, like that whole like essence of of magic and and wanting to believe that's where I, that's where my brain mm. went mm. That's yeah so there is cool. a futility to it yeah like because you can get very attached to plus let's be honest yeah, all those yeah. presents don't just they don't just uh you know appear <laughs> yeah, out just of nowhere, appear out of nowhere. Like, that can't just be people buying things like the, yeah it's it, like it would be too much of a, of a job for santa to not exist yeah it's interesting so. setting up the cookies is just making sure that you know all of your stuff is like ready and prepared you know to capture to hopefully capture the best moment create you know? space for a little magic it's yeah all, it's almost like the yeah imagining christmas night without any of that it's almost like a movie with no score yeah like once you start to feel the cookies and the mystery and the nibbling it almost just starts to feel like a movie that has music scoring it and colors so it's almost it, it's really cool to be conscious of the fact that you can add color and music to it. i mean that's kind of what's what's and then happening. balancing yeah. the shadow side would be for santa to exist the Grinch has to exist as well. You can't just pick one or the other. I can really distinguish between totally logically knowing that Santa is not actually coming down the thing mm. um, and and he's not leaving those presents. My parents did that because I saw them hidden in the closet. But, mm. but, the, but that does not take away the magic or me looking up into the stars at the night, you know, and seeing something red and going, that's, that's Rudolph's nose. Mm -hmm. and wanting mm -hmm. wanting to believe that and wanting to perpetuate that because it's a feeling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm. so interesting i i'd actually be really curious to know a little bit from each of you about what you consider to be your I, origin story but not like where did you come from so much as like where did you come into knowing or feeling or hearing a calling to be an artist when like when do you when's your first memory of that as you were growing up or or whatever that conjures up for you? I think for a lot of performers and definitely for me, um, you there, there's a period in your childhood where you just feel different, where you're just not into a lot of the things that other people are into. Um, I was never into sports or any of that. And there were many years where I didn't really feel like I was good at anything in, academ in academia or any of that. And then in elementary school, there, you know, there are those moments where, okay, we're going to do a show, we're doing Fiddler on the Roof, we're doing Music Man. And then there were these like pivotal auditions where even just like singing Happy Birthday or the National Anthem to decide if you're going to be in your elementary school musical, there's that first taste of feeling like you might excel at something. Um, and then going, oh, maybe, maybe it's okay if I'm not interested in other things or I'm not good at other things if if this is my path so yeah that, that that was my first taste of it was uh was being in elementary school not really being interested in um sports and every single other person was and then they did this show and i was you know a fifth grade tevia with charcoal 
beard and you know. i also remember it was super unifying in that all the kids who played sports who were friends were super supportive and excited mm -hmm. and it kind of bridged everyone together in a really cool way mm -hmm. and it was like oh yeah, he yeah. i guess a part of him makes sense now yeah okay the he's, same way he's when the they one score that does goal, that everyone can feel together appreciative of them it's yeah similar to when you performed in you're trying to make way. sense of yourself and then when mm -hmm. you do you make sense to other people a little bit more yeah, and no, then, yeah but what's a healthy way to have attention when mm -hmm. you do good work yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that was my taste of it's it what about you praise. for me i mean my journey was a little different. I think I just always had a really big, outgoing, bubbly personality. And I think taking after these two, you know, watching them grow up doing theater and everything, like I just, I feel like for me, it was a mixture of of luck a little bit too. Like I just, I, I kind of did do everything. You know, I did do sports. I did gymnastics. I was dancing, I was singing. I was a do it all kind of kid. And opportunities presented themselves to me. And then I just got lucky and I got them. And so I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, similarly to what you were saying about like life having a path and it kind of shows you the way like that, like I really feel like rang true for me because I, I was presented opportunities and it was like, what are you gonna do? Like you're seven years old and someone's like, oh, you wanna be in a Broadway show? It's like, yeah, I wanna be a broad, I'm seven years old, like, absolutely. So, you know, you take it, you know? Mm. So it was like, yeah, like in certain ways, a lot of things were handed to me early on and I was very excited about them. And, you know, I think there have been times where I've questioned for sure, like, is this, is this what I wanna be doing? Is this what I'm meant to be doing? You know, just because I was so young and so much was already handed to me but i had very uh memorable moments throughout high school uh i went to laguardia i was a drama major at laguardia arts high school and um we were performing all the time we were doing plays and you know musicals and there were a lot of moments throughout my lifetime where i was like oh yeah like this this feels good this feels right this is the way that i can express myself i'm good at this you know people think i'm good at this and um yeah just many many random reminders you know whether it was the community of people how it made me feel uh just yeah dif different things that solidified oh yeah like this this is what i'm i meant to do and, and i'm good at it and it brings me joy so you had a bit of fearlessness yeah that's you know if you if there was one thing that did separate you from the other, other kids or you know because that's it's hard it. to see that in yourself but i feel like i struggle with that but you are very very fearless when it comes to putting yourself out there. And... I think I'm fearless in general. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that helps. <laughs> it's not second guess yourself. Yeah, and you have to, yeah. You know, a million vulnerable positions and, you know, sharing that part of yourself. When you're a little kid and you're in a room and you're performing right. for the adults behind the table and they're writing things down and, you know, that can be that that can be impossible for the wrong personality. Yeah, I had so. a very weird sense, uh, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't say weird, I guess it's it's kind of cool, but it is it is kind of extraordinary. My sense of, of self and my confidence, even so young, it was just like ridiculous. Like I kind of just didn't care. I was like, this is me, take it or leave it. <laughs> like that's just been me forever, which is definitely, I think, something that's um, extraordinary. It's if I really myself. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm amazing. You can, you can say extraordinary about yourself, but you can't say extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, extraordinary. <laughs> this, this circles right into what I'm feeling, where it's a reoccurring theme for me, where I, I default into a very shy, closed off side when I was younger, and still, every so often, I'm presented with an opportunity, like from my heart, to become the opposite. Of, of someone who's very shy and closed off and my earliest memories of that opportunity before music or any performance was being a shy kid in school but then like in my heart feeling jokes opportunities to become class clown on like a roll of a certain momentous thing where mm -hmm. I heard a joke or felt it in my heart and it's like wait no one else is is feeling this joke and and then if you voice it it starts to make this like it's a lightning bolt of, mm -hmm. of the opposite of being shy, where everyone is, you threw something out and then everyone is buzzing or laughing off of it. And I remember getting very hooked on that. Mm -hmm. Analyzing it now is me becoming the opposite of what I was by default. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I was, you become like, in a moment, you could become the king of extroversion when you're just the shyest yeah. person in the room. If 
from your heart, you get the right sequence of words in the right moment and it's similar to what songs are. And that has evolved and, and transformed throughout my life. And I remember the same, our grandma signed us up for a theater summer camp when we were super rebelliously like, we don't want to do that. Then I remember the same thing in the room where the kids weren't super engaged. So they would say, here's a part. Does anyone who wants this part? Like it wasn't even audition based. It was just if, if, if I said, like I was, no one else is saying they want this part. It's like, I'll take that part. And then I was like, oh, I'll take it. And then I, I like, same as being a class clown, I kept getting addicted to, as a shy kid, this is my opportunity to um, ex become my opposite. And it's the same, it's the same with music. And it's a very, it's a serious blessing to have that because if I don't take advantage of those opportunities, I become very isolated from Mm. reality and social life and yeah. that's still a recurring theme very very much and i never fully saw it from that perspective and Taking it circles advantage. right into what you're talking about energetic leadership but there was like a time in your youth where like language was trapped inside and then it kind of like flooded yeah. open like a dam and suddenly he was like talking as proficiently as the guitar had been but it's like it had to be practiced on an instrument first and then well, it built up and went boom. and some of that came from being i was a really that security I felt from the guitar made it led me to be able to really practice for hours because it was a direct channel. The more I do this, the more I can have this kind of very secure identity through my guitar. So I became like incredibly technically proficient. And then that, if you go far enough there, the criticism will be you have great technique, but no soul, mm -hmm. which is connected to creativity for sure. So then that just inevitable lawful critique of being a really technically proficient player led me to just dive deep into, okay, what does that actually mean? And mm. how do you make someone say the opposite? Mm. Like what, what could you mm. play? Like, oh, if you play Bach with beautiful vibrato, you have soul. If you play really fast stuff, you're technically proficient, but you don't have soul. So almost like a scientist. Um, Yo, you I think, just took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you just read my mind. <laughs> yeah, take the emotion away. And, and like what makes humans say something has soul and what makes humans say something is technically proficient but lacking in soul. And then that, that led me into Did, a deep, into production, songwriting, classical yeah, music. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> what really stands out to me, and you nailed it, that you literally just took the words out of, out of mm. my head. Well, I was I I and I was just saying it's almost science. like science and then you said it. No, I was like, what I, am I a ventriloquist or what? Dude, yeah, that's, <laughs> my, that's my engineering side too, is oh, the comfort of that scientist thing. Cause you could drive yourself crazy if you stay in your emotions and, and try to digest like someone saying you're not playing with soul. Mm. It's like that could really mess you up. But if you become I always go back and every human has their own taste threshold of what will make them praise something yeah and each one that's like this i, I kind of i'm <laughs> always on a scientific level figuring out what ticks each different one and i think that's yeah. made a bit of a shield for me with with criticism because i just go right to scientists with criticism mm. totally yeah. well, what, you know what really really stands out to me if i can just point out just from my perspective like mm. listening to the three of you there's a, a massive distinction between the actually the the two of you uh josh and and zach and Kylie mm. that, that I'm hearing loud and clear. One is, and, and they're opposites. <laughs> Her, hers oh. is literally, I don't know. I just did it. It came to me. I did it. I was good at it. And it was fun. Like, <laughs> like there's like, there's no calculating. There's just <laughs> trusting the process going for it. Mm. And, and there's also compl no attachment whatsoever to what people think, but everything that you guys mm. said, this is not a criticism. It's just an observation. Mm -hmm. had to do with being a conduit for either making people understand or mm -hmm. being able to say something that makes people like it's connected to others, either mm -hmm. what they think of you for your safety or what you can offer them for their betterment. Right. Like, mm -hmm. like it, it, it's kind of both. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting to me that, what do you yeah. think about that? Yeah. I was going to say, I was like just having this conversation the other day with a friend of mine, but just like how, our identities really are built through others like we all we all need each other i think like a lot of people like to say that you know you can be independent and you know f what other people think and all of that but it's just like i really feel like you 
start to find a sense of self through other people and not necessarily, you know, letting them sort of construct you. But I feel like even in little conversations, you know, we learn, you learn about yourself through other people. They start to bring to uh, life a little bit of what I think is on the inside. You start to become conscious of it because, you know, whether it's through a dialogue, whether it's through doing an activity together, you know, you're still in taking information about yourself through something with someone else. If you were just sitting alone all the time, it's harder to really see what you are without others. And I think that we all share that where it's, you know, our natural talents, I, you know, people watch us and they are expecting things or whatever. And that makes us start to question, oh, what, what do we do up here? Like, we're all standing on a stage. Everyone's looking at us. Like, what do we do? And then that challenges our creativity. And that's why we've decided to become creators. But, you know, with, without the people sort of putting the spotlight on us, you know, we might have done something else. I don't know, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think Kai was always like her first taste of young social life. She was fearless and effortless and and a bit of a leader. And I think with Zach and I, it was it was a little bit of the opposite. And we had to like find our way to Positive. what worked for us um, in a different way. Maybe yeah. maybe maybe with a little bit more creativity. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And yeah, I mean that's interesting because you know I mean even still she's she can fearlessly. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, I have to put my Kylie hat on if I'm going to approach somebody in a certain way and just, you know, <laughs> yeah. because I would go like, yeah. oh, should I yeah. talk to that person that I can hear? And it's like, why not? Yeah, just go yeah. up and say hi. Like, go. why would you even overthink that? And it's like, okay, yeah, so I, I should. It's really fascinating hearing your analysis of us being opposites because there's definitely, like, whenever I record our vocals, I can feel there's some kind of fundamental archetypal elemental balance. There's like fire, water, and earth like they're they're, they're each different and I can feel it, but it's something I've really yet to analyze in a scientific Mm. way. So it's really fascinating to start to do that. But it it was fascinating to hear your perspective. Well, it's fascinating to hear you guys talk because the other, another thing that I observed was that, um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Kylie had it modeled. She had the arts modeled. She grew up in a family Mm. that was already doing the arts. So despite mm. how you guys got there or what you did or what your origin mm. was, she grew up in it. So mm-hmm. chances are she, watching. she could see it. It was modeled, right? It's like when people say, well, no one ever modeled it. So I didn't know I could do it. Sure, Whereas sure. it was such a part of your family that yeah. she didn't have to go, God, I'm, I'm, I feel really shy or, you know, I'm from China or whatever it is. And I need to fit mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? She wasn't looking at that. She was looking at probably a more typical reason why people go into the arts because it looks like fun or because yeah. wow that's so <laughs> cool yeah. Yeah. or i was yeah. inspired yeah. when i saw fred astaire dance or you know like you guys totally. didn't say that like it's really interesting sometimes i ask uh-huh. that question people are like oh i that's saw true. this and i had to do it something came up in me but she grew up watching you guys doing it so the question of is it possible oh. was not a question Clearly, it's possible. I always forget that. Wow. It's so interesting that you just said that. I literally always forget that part of it. It's like, yeah, I grew up watching them on stage, hanging out with their friends, like in costumes, like just such a fun life. And like, yeah, I was totally influenced. Wow. And it was modeled. But she was already more yeah, successful modeled. than us by the and time like she was it. 10 years old. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, that's because she didn't know any different other than it can be done. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, for us, yes. for, for, for me, it wasn't, oh, that's fun. For me, it's that's terrifying. Yeah, I'm enticed, yeah. right? Yeah. But that's so that's because, different than, yeah. That's because I would say that's probably because, A, you're, and you're the oldest too, right? So you're the, mm-hmm. you're the first. So, I mean, I, I don't think your parents, I mean, your dad's a lawyer, right? The parents he's are, a are, lawyer but he had the same archetype of i did a show when i was in school i loved it mm. i excelled at it and then i never did it again oh interesting so you he never had saw that model, story you never saw it modeled in your family like you didn't grow up seeing your parents tiny not besides little... the stories of oh but when i was in high school yeah. i played yeah. danny zuko in greece and, and you little, know all that tiny little glimpses that can't be belittled like there was a guitar in yeah. the house and he did strum chords on it he would play so, trumpet really loud guitar sometimes. Guitar and trumpet. So they're, they're yeah, yeah. I, I'm fascinated by the difference between a child growing up in a house that has a guitar in it or mm. doesn't because it's a huge difference. And there was a guitar in the house and I did, we did see our dad play it. 
sometimes. That's true. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, and your parents, abs I mean, I know your parents, so they absolutely encouraged the arts, clearly. Now, whether they were encouraging the arts because of the arts or because you guys seem to like the arts, I don't know. Yeah. That, that, that's interesting to me. Probably the latter. Because you guys seemed interested in it? Yeah, I think interested, so. Interested, but also good competent yeah like once the technique got to a level my mom's like okay this teacher's saying this is not common i should find a classical guitar mentor and really prioritize mm -hmm. but we've never yeah. heard either parent competently sing a note in their life yeah yep. yeah so and i always wonder with that because i'm always like i feel like it's in there because how could it not be you know, like if you were suddenly in somebody's body as a singer and they said, oh, I'm not a singer their entire life, would you suddenly be able to resonate in a way that they've just like never got off, got off the training wheels or, you know, like how could my dad be such a similar archetype, but not also have some high notes in there and maybe he just hasn't experienced it yet he is a lovely whisp uh not whisper whistler, sorry whistler. Whistler. He's whistler. He's whistler he's an insane whistler so there's a little you know there's insane. a little seed of melody yeah, yeah. in there it's For crazy sure. but sure. that breath control right yeah one of right well and we have yeah. i mean we have our ancestors in us right so yeah. whether or not yeah. it was in that, that generation or not is but i think just in terms oh. of human experience right you had josh right josh how much older are you than zach three Three years, years right? Yeah. And then Kylie, how much younger are you than than I think Zach? She's eight younger. Uh, than eight you? from you, five from him. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, by the time that she came on the scene to be conscious enough to see what you were doing, you guys had already done a lot, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. in this way, that felt like yeah, it's something. It's almost a ticking timer. You, you'll you sing, you'll do. Whereas yeah. for us, it was like. Try yeah. singing. Yeah, it was this weird. I'm yeah, you guys, kind of, probably you guys kind of paved the way. She was probably adopted the exact year that we first kind of tasted it a little. That's, That's so crazy. Cool. Yeah. Well, that how old were you when you were adopted? Like a couple of months. I was really oh, little. See, that's interesting. So, so yeah, yeah. She, grew, she grew up in it. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. Kylie, as the youngest sibling. Yeah. What, like, do you remember, like, what did you admire and emulate from your brothers? And then, and then what? You know, what distinctions did you sort of deliberately make? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a loaded question. I, <laughs> I guess, because like, it's interesting that we're talking about just all of us growing up together and how obviously they paved the way for me. And I grew up in this very, you know, art loving family. Um, it's interesting. I'm thinking now and digesting and processing how that has affected me and it has totally shaped who I am and thinking, you know, I, I can be whatever I want. I can do whatever I want just because we were such a diverse family, you know, I think in our, in our skills and the things that we believed we could do and like our communities of people, like, you know, it was just like, I can be whoever I want to be. So I think that's the biggest thing that I, I think I took was just, you know, just have the courage, get on up there. I guess just, yeah, because you guys did it and I didn't see your nerves. I didn't see your guys, you know, the way that you guys internalized about it. I didn't see any of that. I just saw you rocking out on stage. I saw you yeah. singing, you know, like you guys always had tons of friends and I was like, okay, sick. Like, we're just baller. Like I just, they gave me a lot of confidence, you know, and I was just, you know, I was like just their adorable younger sister and everybody loved me and embraced me right away. And so I just felt super cool. <laughs> just felt really cool from a really young age. Um, but then, yeah, distinct differences was, I think that, uh, I think our ages definitely was a big differentiator. You know, they were always, you know, in similar grades or had similar friends. Like they were just, they were just my older brothers. Like I was just so much farther away from them. It felt like eight years is a long time. I yeah. feel like. it's like almost 10 years. Like that's a very big age gap. So I think the age gap is really what, you know, I, I feel like, like, yes, we all grew up together, but I felt like you guys were able to hang out way more. Also, their brothers, video games, whatever, like hanging out more. Whereas because I was so much younger, you know, I was hanging out with my friends, doing, you know, different things at different times. You know, you guys were going to festivals and I was like just starting high school, you know, so it was like I was in a different chapter of my life. So I think that just for, by our ages that has shaped why I I am so different but yet so similar. I also think that something common between all of us, you know, like talent aside, I feel like there is a sort of 
drive, determination, and maybe a little bit of perfectionism when it comes to success, we all want to succeed, I think, in the things that we know how we best can and putting that foot forward in certain given situations. Like, I feel like when eyes are on us, it is a common thing where we just like, you know, figure out, okay, what what's something that we excel in, you know, no matter what it is. And I feel like that drive for success um, and putting your best foot forward, I think was implemented a bit in our parenting. Like, I think our mom, she's a very strong driving force for, for I think, all of us and, and how she influenced us to tackle opportunities and, and how to present ourselves to the world with just, you know, our best foot forward. She's no. super skilled in training and preparing dogs and horses for, for shows. Her, her devotion to that is almost parallel to how she supported our training creatively. I'm curious to know, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want people to say about you? I, I want people to go to our music as like a little bit of a yogic antidote to, to how reality is creating suffering. So a lot of times when we make a song, we're really just trying to make ourselves feel better. Um, not like feel better, but we're, we're trying to, heal. yeah, we're trying to heal the part of ourself that is, is, is suffering a little bit, I think. And mm -hmm. it's almost like trying to scratch at an itch. So I would hope that if other people are feeling those same complicated emotions, I want people to, to go, oh, I'm feeling this way. I know which song I need to listen to. I think that's why our first answer to what do we want to be remembered for boiled mm -hmm. down to we want our fireball to still exist after we're no longer burning mm -hmm. it physically. Mm -hmm. If the universe is conscious, it has a sense of humor. And it it shows that to you in, All the time. in different moments, right? It's like oh, totally. these okay. little ironies and these mm. synchronicities. We'll lighten up here a little bit. And I want you mm. to just take a moment to think without telling me, if you had to choose one adjective to describe each of the other two, what would it be? So just think about it and lock it in before you share it. Oh man, <laughs> I'm not gonna second guess the first thing. I know it's like I put so much pressure on it. It's like it's an adjective. It's... The interesting thing about the exercise is not what word you choose, but what process you're going through to choose it, because that's what yeah. the, that's what the learning is. So what's mm. going on in your head right now, Kai? I'm just starting to think of so many different adjectives for both of for for their wide range of personalities. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Like there's so much. <laughs> like I don't like. So I'm like, what do you mean by like one adjective? There's, there's no right answer. I, I'm yeah. not attached to what I mean. I, I am yeah. really curious to know because, because what will happen with when your brain gets kind of an ambiguous, that's not ambiguous, but it's, there's so many choices. Mm -hmm. um, your brain starts to try to qualify stuff, right? So, so whether you're, if you're a very heart centered person, which I'm, you know, with your brothers, you probably are, um, you know, you might you might sort of already be blocking out. Oh, I wouldn't want to say that in public or mm. even, though I, even though I felt that, or, or if you're, if you're caring more about me as the host, you might be going, I wonder what she wants. Or if you're thinking more ego centered oh, about no. yourself, you're like, Oh, what will I sound like if I say this? Right. So try mm. if you can to like, ignore all that, ignore all that and tap into maybe what, maybe where you feel it in your body. Cause sometimes, um, Ooh, that's cool. If you pass it through your body and wherever you feel it more. Hmm. I don't want to assign words to you guys because you you both share a lot of so i'm trying to think of the difference what about you zach do you have yours i i felt them in my heart and they're the first ones and i'm i preface them by saying is, is this from a very emotional place these words are coming from a narrative where there's this mission of service that is not a sure thing and needs. That's so cool. Words. So how about you just say the words, but you don't, don't tell me who they're assigned to. Oh, sure. Sure. Go for it. If you feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. First one support second reinforcement. Mm. So, mm -hmm. so Kylie and Josh, tell me which one, which one of those words you identified with. 
which one kind of you felt first? Oh, I can't tell which one he means for either of us, to be honest. Me that's either, cool. but I mean, I love. Oh, I'm not trying to get you to guess what I know, you I know, but that, the but that is what, the truth. What, yes. what you oh, what identify, do you resonate? how you identify with the words that he said. Yeah, I think that I think Zach is the source of creation. And then we're like the front line of helping it um, be ready to be shared. I agree. And that same creative energy without support and reinforcement, reinforcement. is has a has a sad life sometimes, you know, historically, though that's the Icarus that flies too close to the sun. Mm. So, yeah. I think support for me was just like, <laughs> I think like the young, like being a younger sibling, sort of supporting and sharing my opinion on, on how I'm receiving things, you know, their work um, and just being always supportive. I always want to be the supportive of everything they do. The reinforcement I think is also, I think, I think we can all take credit for our sort of we can, we can trust i think our opinions and and what we think is is great and so i think that that might be sometimes where the reinforcement comes in for me is just like um i think reinforcing a certain ideas or how things are unless i'm totally not thinking no that, reinforcement is the no, definition makes, i have in my head but like no, you know what i mean I don't like want to interrupt but i'll add one thing after you yeah no, I'm not. I don't have anything. No, for, for me, yeah, the reinforcement can mean like supporting more, but the, the image and energy in my head is is Gandalf coming down the hill with the army at the darkest hour when the like you have your cause and your support, but things are dwindling and the lights getting the hope is mm. going low, and then Gandalf comes and likes like rein. So it's almost in a very emotional like, like service way, but almost in this like military like there is a battle to to fulfill the service that you have the potential to provide to, to the world. And there's going to be times where you need reinforcements and there's going to be times where, where yeah, yeah. In addition to the support and Those are good then ideas. it's a sure it's a, it's just like, it, that can be as close to a sure thing as it can be. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of what it feels like to rec like record you guys on a song or something. It feels like the single warrior. And yeah, that's the best part of making music together is that the, who, you know, as producers and when you're self-producing and you know when you're balancing it between three ears and getting it to a place where everybody feels good about it is that how much you embody who you are um helps create that balance in a mix is, mm. is something that i think we are very enamored by. like do you remember recording on heartbreak song mm -hmm. and every when we're ever, it's some release now but every time we like hear it back yeah yeah that's that feels like reinforcement yeah, yeah. Like, but in a really emotional profound way where it's kind of like whoa thank god you know yeah yeah mm, it's beautiful do i do my words now yeah whimsical and fearless <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's cool yeah, that's yeah. Cool. oh my gosh mine uh dwindled down finally to um passion and intensity very mm -hmm. good words yeah what's your guys response <laughs> to that Zach and Josh um, that's interesting we we definitely both have some of each but I'm probably intensity maybe you think no she's her expression would suggest no I'm I'm a neutral yeah, but I, I have a poker face that no poker one face. yeah my <laughs> poker face is pretty you. good I think I'm in intensity but i don't know not you know it depends on what part of you is being exactly eliminated. that's how i like my adjectives because i was like it really She's depends well, also, I think it, was, it really depends it was difficult because we have like i remember the times where i was your total opposite in my identity and i remember the conversations where i started to let your perspective in to my actual heart <laughs> and mind merge with it i in my nature am the shy artist who doesn't care about external anything. Their numbers mean nothing. It's all about that. You could be alone in the room forever. 
just soothing your soul and that's enough. Don't worry about any external reality. And then Josh has an instinct that's like, yes, but compared to what that could be, that is a, like potentially almost like tragic that, that, that soul is all alone in the room. Mm. Can you finish this phrase? We'll go, we'll go one by one. Most people think that Josh is, but the truth is. That's really, it is a dumbfounding one. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't, I don't care for most people's perception of me <laughs> at all. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, maybe probably as a defensive I mechanism, but I don't things. try to think about what people think about me very often because I do think I'm very misunderstood. Um, most people think that Josh is probably just that I'm confident when really I'm vulnerable. Mm. I think that that's the most simple way of putting it. I think mine is most people think Kylie is careless because I can be very carefree and fun and just like do my own thing. But the thing is, I, I actually care a lot. Not like about what people think about me. I, I think I care about the right things, which is like, you know, this also kind of ties into like lead, like what legacy I want to leave. And I think it's, it's caring a lot about, I think the best ways to celebrate being human and, and making sure that my energy is, is in a space where it is inspiring to other people because I'm able to live and celebrate life and myself in a way that I think is harder for other people. So I'm always caring about being carefree oh man major blind spot i had the others most people think zach is yeah, this is a yeah, this really is interesting thing to do what do you think other people think you are what do they think zach i was think i was listening to a podcast the other day that was like like you aren't what other people think you are you are what you think other people think you are yeah i think yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. saying i saw yeah, that yeah. on a podcast. i heard that somewhere what other people think of you that's where i struggle with collaboration like you think if somebody has a very specific you are idea of who i am then i become that and then it's yeah. like uh-oh i can't create to the degree that i would like to because you're turning me into something right yeah all right, well, I'm not going to question what came, but most people think Zach is finding it, but Zach is getting back to it. Ooh, I love that. So most people think Zach is seeking when Zach is reuniting. Mm. Yeah, like if I can optimize and format all the different identities I've been kind of reincarnating through in the past 10, 15 years, it will be a return. Like, it's really hard. Like some of the first things I ever wrote and recorded are superior to the, the latest things. And I'm just really trying to optimize. Yeah, the, the, the seeds I felt at the birth of my creative identity in ways I almost need have needed my older self and support and reinforcements to like merge, totally. merge that, yeah. Hey, Kylie, I asked these guys last time, clearly you love your siblings. So I think we're in a safe right. space to say, you know, what ticks you off about them? What, 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 you know, oh my what, God. what pushes your buttons? What, what does it take to, to make you, you know? I think, I think for, for you, it's like, I mean, it's what older siblings are supposed to do, but I think the, the intense, uh, the pressure to, Maybe I guess make certain choices or, or live a certain type of way because you're looking out for my best interest puts a lot of a lot of pressure sometimes. But I know it's all from a place of care. But sometimes that's just like one thing where it's just like, oh, like God, like I just you don't ever want to let them down. But it's like oh, sometimes you just kind of have to listen to to how how you're feeling. Otherwise, you're living for uh, at the expectation of somebody else. So sometimes that <laughs> gets me. Um, and then for you, what irritates me? <laughs> <laughs> Pointing at Zach for those who are not watching. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Zach is not Zach is... <laughs> a very like not like an irritating, irritating person, person, but like if I had to pick something, I mean, what is it? I mean, not, this is so uncomfortable. Like no one ever asked me these questions. Like it's so, I can't like, I can't be mean to them. Um, <laughs> something that irritates me is like. But you know, it's not about them, right? I mean, it may irritate you, but that's oh, only because you, you, that's only true. you yeah, created the button. Yeah. <laughs> that's he's true. Not, he's yeah, not yeah. trying to irritate you. That's We're true. Perfect. That's this true. This is all your problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true actually. It's good to remember. Um. I mean, it's 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 both what I think makes you beautiful, but also sometimes can irritate me depending on on the day or my patience will be you how how you so excitedly will express certain um, I, ideas or things just sure, like the sure. length of, of time on a given day. Sure, but it's sure. very, you know what I mean? It's no, very. Time, yes, right? like, you know, but that's not something to, to I think worry we're about. Yeah, I think and everyone I try, knows. Yeah, I try. You don't do that a lot. Well, I think I'm getting better. Yeah. Your yeah. energy can sometimes be best translated through songs. Yeah. And that's that's yeah, that's yeah, yeah, why you spend so much time preparing it before you share it. And also the engineering, like I can set up the mics quietly in a second, but I would drive both of them crazy talking about why. Oh, we got to use the RE20 right. and these and the SM7B on you two guys, and I'll get the preamp going. We got to get the right. right. Like if I tell them that. <laughs> they'll be very annoyed but if i just do it quietly with right. the same energy in my heart they'll love how they sounded and be like, and it looks it's, great. A, it's great it's appreciated and it's not a big deal yeah but i like I'll, I'll i know i've learned my friends that i can nerd out with about engineering and it's not <laughs> these two yeah which is cool that's fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome um i'm not gonna ask i'm not gonna ask you guys what irritates you about her because you know what it's her first time so <laughs> Okay. No, you can. You can tell me. No, you tell know? me. Yeah, I want to know. I want to know. Who knows what irritates <laughs> me about her? Oh, she could yeah. probably answer it better than I could. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> like <that. laughs> I, it's the same I thing should. that irritates me about all actors, actually. Whoa. Ooh. Yeah. Whoa. So for any actors listening here, <laughs> is just the you because you become so accustomed to shape shifting. Mm that there's a danger in who you become around certain people. And that's, that's yeah. the, that to me is the great danger of young actors or actresses making their way through productions in Hollywood and coming in, in close proximity with that energy. And so I think a part of the older brotherhood is, in ter is protecting the, the light and not letting it be influenced by, mm -hmm. um, by a certain strand of stereotype that I don't want being fed more. Mm -hmm. That that's kind of like a really complicated way of saying it. But you know, when you're when you're more naturally social and when that's more of a skill for you, yeah. not being taken over by the community, still holding on to who you are. I feel are. like because because you've always said that though, I always try to watch that. Yeah. But it has gotten harder as I as I'm getting older and mm. I am growing and changing. And then I I like recently have been like, okay, who am I? What am I doing? Questioning, mm -hmm. you know, reevaluating sort of what is my intention here? What is my purpose? Who am I truly? What are my values? What speaks to my heart? Like I'm having to reconsider all these things just because I feel like I've been on a certain, you know, working trajectory for so long it's like i'm finally having these moments like in adulthood of stillness and being like who is this that, that's the that's what an older brother should be we should be a little devil's advocate on your shoulder oh god please <laughs> i have, I have that i have you, you have i have mom have i'm like oh my god you, 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 you're that no us. i'm totally i'm totally my own but you also yeah. fly yeah. off to foreign countries because you want to get away from everything I and do so do this. when you're there you have to be you I have to this. be smart <laughs> i do this no i think i do that to to test myself to really be like okay like let's like really see what i'm like you know without but having mm -hmm. all, but all of your voices get very much louder when I am by myself and yeah. I'm secluded. You guys are very present. Like uh -huh. mom, dad, you guys, like you guys are there. Whoa. <laughs> you are there every step of the way. Yeah. Harley, I'm so curious. Can I ask you something? Yes, of course. What are you afraid Over of? Over here. What are you afraid what of? What am I afraid of? No. What am I afraid of? 
Huh. I've been thinking about this question a lot to see what it really could be besides spiders. <laughs> That's a very superficial answer right there. I'm terrified of spiders. Like, I really just, I can't do it. I don't know why. The onset, that tells you not much. Yeah. If that's the first know. thing that comes <laughs> No, seriously. I'm like, I just don't, like, a lot of people fear death. I don't fear death. I don't fear being alone. I mean, I guess I grapple with this. I, I feel like maybe I would fear being alone, like ending up completely alone. Like, if everyone in the world, like, died and I was just like by myself on the planet like mm -hmm. that's kind of scary that would be really intense I think I think I think the thing that I fear is like grappling with uh certain emotions that I don't normally deal with like I'm I'm having a little bit of that now just like certain emotions that are underdeveloped or under uh expressed a lot like you know just having to deal with that is a very intense process so i feel like maybe that would be it because i'm not used to being alone i have a big family i have a lot of friends like i'm just i'm very used to having people so so yeah probably if like there was an apocalypse and i was just like hanging out somewhere and they didn't touch me and i was alone on the planet I don't know, know there's no there's no rule that you have to fear something or that you have to look for the fear. I mean, the fear will will yeah. will fear. I think fear is um is is great. Good. It's great in the way that um it's a signpost to something. It's our edge, maybe right mm. where we come into our set where our, where we default to our primitive self because we because we fear the unknown, right? And 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 yeah. we fear our safety. So it makes sense that in the bigger picture, when you're looking for it, you're gonna conjure up you know an apocalyptic visual right <laughs> filmic right. filmic thing it's so interesting right that that we sort of we ascribe like oh shouldn't i be afraid of something um i definitely but, fear the unknown that's a that's a very quick and easy not easy but like it's it's very abstract but yeah. um yeah the it's simple like totally the unknown i absolutely fear the unknown <laughs> i so stress about know, it on a daily basis if you didn't know what was happening tomorrow or if that apocalypse was happening tomorrow, what would you do today? What would you do differently today? Oh, so I've been in this sort of headspace of like trying to gain certain information as I've been moving through about who I am. And I feel like that's enough in itself. I feel like every day you're a step further in in whatever personal journey it is, whether it's figuring out yourself, whether you want to be a better person, whether you want to be a kinder person, you know, I think that every day is is a starting point for that. So if you finish your day and you achieved one of the things that you set out for, then you you did it. Then you did it and you can die tomorrow and it's okay because you've had so many steps leading up to that point that have been successful. That's I think beautiful. every everything is perfect the way it's supposed to be. Yep. Okay, I gotta do rapid fire, then I'm gonna let you go. And do you want to do you want to go um one, two, three? Or do you wanna like uh Z K J? Yeah. Z K J. Cool. Z K J. Okay. Ready? What makes you hungry? Food. French fries. Lasagna. What makes you sad? Nothing. Love. Grief. What inspires you? Everything. Love. The galaxy. What frustrates you? Stuff. What'd you say? Stuff. My mom. Gatekeepers. What makes you laugh? Kylie just now. My brothers. <laughs> I just think of comedians' names. Bill Burr, Chappelle. <laughs> Bill Burr. <laughs> what makes you angry, Zach? Fire. Makes me angry. Um, injustice. Lying. Ooh. And finally, what makes you grateful? What's here? What makes you grateful? What's here in this, yeah, and the space between it not being here and that it is here? Everything. Family. Cool. <laughs> you guys are the best. Top three things that happened today. Top three, one, one thing, one top thing that happened today. Go. Oh. Uh, this this talk yeah this talk okay you're not allowed for... to say this talk okay thank fine. you <laughs> um, what was a great thing it's like we said before but i w was hearing a song 
that I hadn't been able to hear in that way yet. And so the final edits, yeah, you final, mean? Le final edits of a, cool. something we're excited to release. Almost final. I am going to be a video game character for a PlayStation video game. <laughs> so uh, I was just in the <laughs> studio uh, doing the voiceover stuff for that. And, uh, and that that's always a really, really good time. So but cool. I think something cool that happened was I got frustrated at a point in the process trying to get a certain product and then having a conversation and then just realizing that it, 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 there's no one thing that's good or the other takes are bad it's all options and they're mm -hmm. all kind of like you know you're just always giving different versions of things you know so even if they're not like okay that was it that doesn't mean that everything that you just did was trash it's all different options and so i think hearing that you know made me feel a lot settled about any work that i do cool what a great way to finish you guys you have mm. mic drop <laughs> she nailed it <laughs> <laughs> very nice you guys was so pleasure. fun so nice thank you so much you. and so nice chat yeah again. this was amazing I've been speaking today with Josh, Zach, and Kylie Leah Page. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'm Lisa Hopkins. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. And remember to live in the moment. <laughs> in music, stop time is that beautiful moment where the band is suspended in rhythmic unison, supporting the soloist to express their individuality. In the moment, I encourage you to take that time and create your own rhythm. Until next time, I'm Lisa Hopkins. Thanks for listening.